G'day all, I'm Graham Sanders and I live in Townsville, North Queensland. This is where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. I'm trialling the Honeypot Hive system and in the tropics we're going to be using Tetragonula hocking's eye, the local native stingless bee. In this episode, the induction. It's the 2nd of June 2016. Overnight, oh, it got a little bit cooler, 18 degrees. Maximum today is supposed to be 28, 29. Very pleasant, very clear skies. From the last video, I said I was going to try one of two methods depending on what happened in here. Well, the best laid plans of mice and men go astray. I know this is a strong hive, but I never realised how strong until I opened it up. The plan was to get enough brood to say half fill this box and then maybe set it up separately using the induction as a secondary measure. Well, we're going to go induction and we're going to do it live. So you can see it all happening here. But what happened to force this on? Well, it's a rather simple exercise. Just move this brood out of the way for the moment. When I lifted it out, and that's the brood chamber here. Oops, that's the brood chamber here. Anyway, the brood was massive, and I mean massive. And instead of being, like I said in the last episode, cupped, like this well they must have felt the cold weather coming on because they've balled it up now and instead of being a cup shape it was a massive ball about that big and i mean massive what's that bigger than a softball oh it was huge started right from the corner went right down around and back up again with some pollen down in here the problem with that was, when I lifted this top off, all that ball came out in one massive ball and hung down like a honeybee hive. So what did I have to do on that? Well, I could. I was hoping it would split in two in some way to allow me easy access to some loose bits hanging around. Instead, I just had a massive ball of honeycomb. And as well, brood comb, I should say, sorry about that, but the brood comb was so massive and so bally, I could not tear it apart without causing massive damage to the hive and massive anger to the bees. So this morning, what I did was I got just a very small amount of brood and put in here. This proved to be a headache and I actually removed it. But it's going to go back in again because we are doing a trial and the designer wants to see whether the scaffolding works. So it is going back in again. My initial plan was rather simple. I got some wonderful uh, tape that I could remove here. I got tape at the bottom here. So that the bees, I could set this up on a bench, put the various supers on top and below, and just slide out these bits of plastic. Well, that went down the gurgler because we couldn't get enough brood and young bees in here. And so now I'm just going to set up the hive for induction and the few bees in here, well, they're just going to fly around and go, where else? Into the entry. I did have success, however, in getting some pollen and even one honey cell. So, we're going to use that first to start off the procedure. So let's start off with our pollen. We'll leave our little babies there, they won't do anything there but muck around. So, as we said in the previous design, here's our pollen super at the bottom. And we're going to transfer this pollen. Now, some's loose, some's in propolis. That's okay, propolis, wax, whatever you want to call it, some's in their cells. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to transfer these to the pollen super here. So we'll take off the top. Cell size, 
looking at it from here is about right. So I'm just going to start prodding into here some of this pollen. Doesn't have to be pretty. That's a big lump of three cells there together. I'll use my fingers to break it up a little bit. The whole idea is to induce them to use it. They'll probably harvest most of this. See all the loose pollen in there? Look at it all. Heaps of it. Don't throw it away. The bees love that. I'm going to pour it into the cells as well. So there we go. That's the pollen all transferred in. You can, oh, we'll see if you can grab that. You can see that I put a couple of pollen cells that were broken open there. I didn't care too much about getting the cells really nice and neat. I was more concerned of just getting enough pollen in there because once the pollen's in there, they're going to see it. They're going to react to it. Oh, get off there. Get off there. Come on. Thank you. Poke in there. I'm poking some of the stuff into the cells, maybe to encourage them. The whole idea is it's to stop them immediately wanting to build a tunnel from one end to the other. So instead of building a tunnel, they will now, hopefully, start thinking about this as a pollen store. On goes our lid. And that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to do a straight induction into here. So, why put this together and transfer it there? My initial uh, plan was I was going to put these together and put sticky tape over these so I could then lift them all up all together. So, my initial plan was put this on here, pull this slip off, out comes the bees, immediate access in here, block this off. Not worried about that anymore. I'm next to the local hive. Haven't got many bees in here. And the whole plan went out the window because I couldn't get enough brood. So instead now, I'm going to build this up in the actual box. So we'll put the little babies over here. Move the box into place. Take out the two bits. In she goes. Now, I've already pre-cut a tube to join the two together, and that will go in there like that. So we're going to put that in now, and a little piece of wood, just to hold it up. There we go. And push that in. And if we've done that all properly, yep, holes line up beautifully. Okay, how do we stop that moving around? Well, you could squirt silica, silastic, gunk. All you can do, what I'm going to do, is just shove some paper in there, each side, until it's nice and firm. So a bit of paper, held in place. We'll shove you in there to start. Of course, you're going to move. So we'll shove some on the other side. There we go. That's looking good. Bit more of a shove, bit more of a tear. Tweezers come really handy in these sorts of jobs. Now she's getting nice and firm and tight. Some this side. Keep doing it until that's beautiful and tight. I don't have to worry about bees trying to think about anything else. I'm just walking through. Have a quick look down the hole. Let's have a look. Oh, we bang on the hole. Looks good. That one's pretty tight. That one's pretty tight. So I think we've basically got it. So there we go. So. There's our induction box all set to go. Next job is this one. Now I've got to put this, the scaffolding, 
back in again. So, I'm going to do that, but before I do that, I want to get myself all set up. I need to put the divider, one of these plastic dividers, where's the right size one? There she is. That goes on top. Now they'll glue up in between, but I guess that's for easy separation. So I'm ready to do all this in, in one or two goes. So where do we start? Well, we're going to start at the top, of course. Now, bees are going to fly out. Not particularly worried. Unless they go up my nose, and then I will be worried. So, take this off, this little lid. There we go. There's one just flying out now. He's had enough. Take the lid off. Now the brood has slipped a little bit, so what I'm going to do is just position it. You won't be able to see what I'm doing, and that's okay, but all I'm doing is trying to position the brood out of the way. And there we go, that's pretty good. In she goes. Try not to squish any. They set out, set off alarm pheromones when they uh, get a bit squished. That looks very good. I've got the brood in there. The bees are starting to get a bit aggro, but that's okay. We're covering this okay. Put this back on, and that's perfect. So the brood's in there, and the scaffolding's in there now. Well, let's take off this bottom bit now. Off she comes. No bees coming out, perfect. In you go, little babies. And there's the brood chamber in place. Got the little bees crawled out the top. Okay. We need to put another bit of scaffolding on. Let's see if we don't upset this little bee too much. And we don't. Now, remember there were different size honey pots? Well, let's have a look at these honey pots. One, two, three, four. Oh, we'll do it this way so you can see. You got bees hatching and crawling out of there. That's good. Let's have a look now. Where's the honey container? There it is. I managed to get one honey pot. And I've placed it in here in case it catch any leaks. You can see that it's open at the top. But that's okay. Now the size of it, I'm looking at the second smallest size of the four that I've got as probably the right size. So I'm just... Doesn't want to fall in, so we'll go to the next biggest. The second biggest, and yes, that falls in like a glove. Tuck it down. A little bit of honey at the bottom. I'm not particularly concerned about that either. You'll see why in a minute, because I'll eat that. There's one other little bit of stuff I've got here, and I'm going to put this at the entrance, and this is a bit of both honey and propolis, or wax, although it's not really wax. That's going to help scent the bees in. Might even catch a few, but they'll certainly want to lick that up. So I'm putting that just at the entrance. I wouldn't recommend this for beginners, but this is such a strong hive, they're just going to gobble that up like anybody's business. All right, so we've got our little loose bee here who doesn't want to go in his hole, and I don't blame him either. It's a nice day. Come on, fella. Climb up on here. That's, thank you. What about you go in the nest? I'll put this just next to the entrance. You'll probably crawl off and smell the entrance. All right, so one honey super only over the top. There's no sign of any bees. And the clear lid. That's all I'm going to do for this induction. I'd love a second super for this, but okay, it's all experimentation. It's all to see what's going on. And I got that lid on just in time. First bee has arrived to say, see what's going on in this new hive. And there's the hive ready to go. I'll put these on. Oh, he's already drinking the honey. How nice of you. And another bee's found the honey as well. So now I'll just put on these extras honey supers just for a bit of weight. And 
we're ready to go for the next bit. There we go, we get rid of that little bee. As you can see, you hang around the entrance of these hives and already they get a bit upset over the fact you're there. <laughs> all right, so that's all set to go. On goes the lid. So we put the lid on. And we'll put the top on. And this is now ready to go on here. And here's where mass confusion will now reign supreme. If I've done my measurements right, if the world's kind to me, this should simply work. I've got a couple of bees that have landed on the pot. I'll let him crawl off. And all I do is pick that up, shove it in the entrance, and then stand back because the bees will have to reorientate themselves. There's talk about you've got to cover the entrance so they can't disguise it scent the front that's the reason i've got the bit of propolis on honey here is just to scent the front so the bees realize that's what's going on come on fella you stop me working please be why i'm worried about one bee when this hive contains probably ten thousand bees but oh well just a nice fella i suppose come on you come on you buggers get out of there come on you can see the bees probably building up behind me now because I'm stirring up the front entrance. Not something you should be doing. There's a dead bee probably from the uh, opening of the hive this morning being carried out. Come on you. Stop me working. There's my caring nature. There we go, got rid of you. Okay, that goes on here. And let's see how we go. Have I got this lined up? The answer is either yay or nay. And I seem to be just about right with a spacer. Handy to keep pieces of wood, stuff around, whatever, to get your height right. So that seems to be about the right height. Shove a nice board in there. I've pushed it in quite hard. So I'm assuming the bees don't realise that. And already, hope you can hear me, already the bees have found that propolis. And already they're just flying into this opening where all this honey is. And that is the induction done. I'll see how they go in the next hour or so. But that's it. They'll take a few hours to orientate to the new hive. I'm hoping that they'll take to it with the brood in there. The chamber's a little small. I'm a bit worried about the size of the brood chamber. But with all experiments, time will tell. Never say you know everything. You always learn.